From the time we wake up until we go to bed, all of us face certain hazards. But we survive them. We don't get hurt or killed, simply because we know the ordinary dangers and avoid them. We don't normally fall down staircases. We don't normally cross the road, except at a crossing. We don't normally fall from dizzy heights if our job takes us to such places. We don't normally break our limbs, even doing this sort of thing, if it's our job. And in spite of the thousand and one dangers of the teeming city, most of us continue to enjoy life. Our jobs in London transport are no more dangerous than any others, provided we go about them in the right way, with care and common sense, and the right amount of knowledge. Every railway system has its permanent way. There may be one or more tracks. Here's a bit of London Transport's permanent way. On the extreme left, is the space between the sleeper ends and the cable, called the cess. Here, safety from traffic can normally be obtained. Next comes a track known as a four-foot way. Then a space, the ten-foot way. Here, men can move about with reasonable safety and find stacking room clear of passing trains. Then another track, or four-foot way. Traffic direction on these two left-hand tracks is indicated by the arrow. The left-hand tracks are separated from the right-hand tracks by a six-foot way. Then, as before, a four-foot way, a ten-foot way, a four-foot way, and a cess. The arrow shows the direction of the traffic. Anyone using the tracks should be certain of the direction of the traffic. Examination of the signals in the section is the simplest method. Obviously, the side you read faces the oncoming traffic and practically every signal is placed directly alongside or above the track to which it applies. Where there are no signals, look at these wooden blocks or keys. Remember, they are usually inserted in the direction the traffic goes, so the traffic generally moves this way. Where traffic is dense, then a moment or two spent in intelligent observation will settle the question for you. At some places, London Transport's tracks are very close to British Railway's steam system. Steam can blot out your view. In such places, take extra care when moving about and in listening for warning signals. London Transport track is mostly electrified and consists of running rails, a positive conductor rail, and a negative conductor rail. Between the positive and negative rails, there is a potential. That is to say, the current is always ready to pass from one rail to the other, or from either rail to earth, if it can find a path. Neither rail is harmless. Let's see how electricity behaves at high potential. Here, in the National Physical Laboratory, a technician is building up a very high potential between these two metal spheres. At such a high voltage, the air itself between the spheres becomes a path of the current. On electrified track, a metal object such as a slewing bar handled carelessly can provide a path. So can a human body. Your job will often take you onto electrified track. So you must take precautions against the danger of electric shock. Clothing is of first importance. Loose clothing always presents a certain danger. This technician's Macintosh could be dangerous, but fortunately he is taking certain safety precautions before going on the track. First, he fastens it completely. Next, he fastens the belt so that the ends shall not touch the live rails, for clothes may conduct electricity. What's more, loose clothes might get caught up by passing trains, which would be very unpleasant. When he walks on the track, he steps over all rails, not on them. 
and he stepped short so as not to slip. He gives the positive rail, which is higher than the running rail, a safe and wide berth. When he gets into the sass, he walks facing the oncoming traffic and stands clear of all tracks. When a train approaches, he turns to face it and stands motionless until it has passed. A good example. Follow it. A train driver has a responsibility toward men on the track. He must be on the alert and warn them of his approach by blowing his whistle. This warning is picked up by the lookout man who protects the gang. When they receive the warning, they must stand clear of all tracks and remove their equipment and tools. The lookout man wears an armlet. He has passed an examination in his duties. In addition to the horn, he also carries red and green flags and detonators for use in an emergency. He protects the gang all the time they are working. When the time comes to knock off, they must remove all tools and stow them in a safe place, clear of traffic. Here, in this ten-foot way, the equipment will not be interfered with, neither will it present any danger to the traffic. Returning to the cabin, the lookout walks in front of the gang, where he can give good warning of approaching traffic. As long as they are on the tracks, the lookout is responsible for the men's safety. So the gang must obey his signals. In cases of extreme emergency, a lying down position in the six foot way will be safe. Much safer than stepping into the other four foot but uh, try not to have to do it. These men are correcting the level of the track. There are several ways of doing this. This is one of them. Most of them know that even with the positive rail alongside them, it's perfectly safe to use a shovel providing they approach the running rail from the four-foot or six-foot way and don't handle the metal part of the shovel. But there's a black sheep in this family, too. This man is now using his shovel wrongly. He inserts the blade between the positive and the running rail. Trouble soon starts. A man has been hurt. Signals have gone to danger. Traffic is stopped. It's a short way to chaos. Back at the incident, help is at hand, and the victim has been pulled clear of the live rail. The signal department is always on the scene quickly in an effort to reduce the delay, and traffic is soon moving again. But a careless mistake has caused a lot of extra work. Fortunately, it is a dry day and the man lives to tell the tale. It's obvious, isn't it? Mind the juice. Dangers of a different kind exist in depots. This depot is a busy place and has a great deal of moving traffic. To 
any London transport employee in a depot for the first time, some of the traffic is unfamiliar, and therefore it is necessary to use greater caution than usual. Stationary trains, which look quite innocent just as long as they stay that way, can pack a terrific punch when they begin to move. You can't blame the driver. wasteful and unnecessary accident which could have been avoided had the unfortunate man stopped just a moment to think and observe. Don't forget, danger lurks everywhere for the unwary. Nor is this an isolated case, for this sort of thing happens all too frequently. Taking a lift to the next job in this way is by no means a certain way of arriving there in one piece, particularly for this man. A sudden stop a slip, either could have serious consequences for him. Whether in depots or out on the track, if you want to be safe, you must be alert and you must think ahead. Not like this gang, for instance. Oh, lad, we all here. Where's Charlie? Charlie! There he is. Let's give him a hand. Bigger and more serious accidents arise from simple beginnings. Beginnings which you can prevent. In this film, you have seen many such accidents and their causes. So, always take time to think about any action which may place your person in danger. Mm -hmm. 